Welcome back to Dream Drop Distance. We're kind of done with Traverse Town for the time being. Yeah, we'll have to go back later, though. It'll be for a completely stupid and unlikable reason, but we'll be back. It hurts my heart just thinking about it, Hell Dragon. So that was a good uh, view of that modeling program. Thank you. In their world, something happened that brought their existence to an end. Low game sales. <sighs> So Rhyme was dreaming of Kingdom Hearts this whole time? She's a fan girl. Ah, makes sense. I kind of feel sorry for the uh, Twee characters, that's the, uh, yeah. Because um, they became worse than Heartless, their entire world is gone. Yeah, looking for a sequel, looking for a way back to their world. It's just not looking up very well for these guys. Are these hurtful and distasteful jokes going to be confined to Traverse Town, or am I going to have to experience them throughout the whole of da da, -da? Maybe. <laughs> this screen here, with the whole twirling one and whatnot, reminds me of the uh, co-op attacks in Twee. You know, both characters appear on screen at the same time, say something cool, and then beat the shit out of the enemy. Well, that's how most super attacks should go. It should be like a pose and like, ah! <laughs> Let's say a friend. What? Of God, apparently! <laughs> Shalom, motherfuckers. <laughs> I'm out. I'm going to go talk to God about this whole Lucifer thing. See, we can't clear that up. <clears throat> oh, God. Do, do we really need a fancy angel in Kingdom Hearts? We already have a one-winged angel. Yeah, I think as a whole, the whole angel thing is something that tends to have not worked well in this series. You know, I could explain it, but that's spoilers for Twee, unfortunately. Oh, and by the by, I know that the pronunciation for the abbreviation of the World Ends Review would probably sound more like Twee, but, uh, you know, you try saying that three times first. Which means we must choose... The first step of your Mark of Mastery exam is to stand up straight, listening to me waffle for ten hours. Strong leg strength is essential for Keyblade Mastery. You think you would want him to do push-ups so your arms are good enough so you can swing better, but I don't know. Why is this beard bisected into two? I just realized that. Assholes. True masters. Like I said, assholes. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> let's just equip this for when we're next playing Asura. Pretty good Keyblade, like I mentioned last time. A lot of the Keyblades in Dida I find are pretty neat, actually, both aesthetically and, you know, for combat purposes. Well, aesthetically, there's always an argument there, but I do think that, um, uh, this time around, at least, a lot of the Keyblades felt more useful. Like, like you have some that focus on strength, some that focus on magic, things like that. It's more, They're more applicable more often. Yeah, it's not like, say, Pixie Pell in uh, Birth by Sleep, it's the Keyblade you get after Neverland and right before Destiny Islands where you get your best story-based Keyblade, just rendering it pointless to use. Yeah, nicely done, guys. Now, uh, the world we're going to now, I'm fucking hyped for, and I was hyped since the very first unveiling of Dudu, because it was in the uh, unveiling trailer. We're going to the City of Bells, Hunchback of Notre Dame land. Now, we have argued about that uh, before. I have said on several occasions that this world, the Hunchback of Notre Dame, would never show up in Kingdom Hearts because it was so religiously charged. I was halfway wrong. It's in here, but as a result, they've completely removed 
all of its religious connotations, and it's lost a lot of bite as a result. Yeah, one of the uh, changes that kind of disappointed me, to be honest. We'll get more into detail in that regard when we actually get to the world proper. So I want to find the guy who designed all these dives and just, like, hurt him a bunch, because he's throwing bells and fucking towers everywhere. No, don't you get it? This is where they assemble all the churches, and then they just drop them into Paris. <laughs> oh, it's like Tetris. <laughs> <laughs> just... Do -do 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 -do. It brings a tear to my eye, Hell Dragon. Why are you crying over video games, Tom? Not over video games, Hell Dragon. These metaphorical tears are due to the fact that my favourite Disney film, next to Hercules, is finally represented in Kingdom Hearts. It's a wonderful thing, really. Oh snap, it's a judge. Okay, play it cool, play it cool. You're just an anime character going about his business. You're not consorting with witches. Play it cool. What? Who? Me? There's no one else in this city. Your name? I'm Sora. Such disgusting attire. I know what you are. Marketable. Frollo. Sir, what is the matter, Captain Phoebus? Can't you see? I am interrogating this gypsy. <gasps> he said the G word. See, red implies gypsy. Just a boy. I shall be the judge of that. It's in the job title, after all. Now, Captain, did you have something to report to me, or did you not? We should probably get this out of the way before we start the level proper. Um, Tony J is sadly no longer with us, so uh, Corey Burton has taken over the role as Judge Claude Frollo. He does a decent job. Um, you know, he gets some of the inflections of Frollo's uh, voice down pat, but other times he just sounds like Yensid doing a deeper voice. Yeah, I mean, it's not really Corey Burton's fault in this case. I mean, he had to follow up on Tony J, who's very distinct as a lot of his characters besides Frollo, and as a result, it just doesn't have enough bite, but I'm not really gonna fault uh, Corey Burton for that, but that's just how it is. Yeah, he does a fine job, and um, I forget who did the original voice of Phoebus, I think it was Kevin Klein, but don't quote me on that, but uh, here, Phil Lamar voices him, and I gotta say, he does a pretty good job. Just gonna grab a few drop me nuts so we don't have to worry about that pesky drop meter. One thing I also want to mention about um, the whole fact that they got rid of a lot of the uh, religious connotations uh, in this world. This is my main problem with Frollo in this world, not the voice actor. Um, it's the fact that, as you know in the movie, uh, Frollo was really charged by his religion. You know, he thought he was a pure man. He thought he was doing God's work and he wanted to get rid of the gypsies because he thought they were doing witchcraft. They were tempting people to sin, things like that. Here it's just... I don't like their clothing or something. It's just, it, it lacks a lot of the punch it had in the movie. And as a result, Frollo here comes off as a very weaker kind of villain. In the movie, Frollo's stock, but he's really entertaining stock. And here it's just not as impressive. Oh, there's mentions of witchcraft, and Esmeralda practically gets called uh, a witch every time she's on screen with Frollo. Um, but other than that, no, there's no religious connotations to it at all. One of my main problems with the world, actually, uh, is the fact that there's barely anyone in it. You know, Paris is meant to be all hustle and bustle. This is set during the Feast of Fools, for God's sake. Quasi is currently accepting applause from an invisible crowd. This is Olympus Coliseum levels of awkward. It's a city. There's nobody here, and now you'll really see that later on when we actually start moving around most of the city proper. The damn thing is empty. Get to safety. Let me help. Oh well, hi Esmeralda, I guess. Esmeralda, I'm a gypsy. Yes, yes, you are. She says that a lot, by the way. Because of the way the narrative of Hunchback has been abridged for Kingdom Hearts, something I'll address later. A lot of her character had to be toned down. And all she really does in this version of events is state things about the gypsies. Okay. One thing I will add about the uh, Dream Eaters in this world. Now, usually I'm not a fan of them. They're very gaudily, you know, designed and things like that. They don't match. But in this world, considering the Feast of Fools is going on right now, I feel they fit really well. Like with all the whole spectacle and color 
of the entire thing. So at least here, you know, they match more. They're very festive. It's got kind of like a Mardi Gras kind of feel to it. It was here that I I was still having problems, um, you know, handling all the combat in Dream Drop Distance, especially flow motion, you know. And I just, I really struggled on this fight more than I needed to. One advice I do want to give um, when playing this is, you know, have your deck mainly focused around big area moves. You know, like zero gravity, thunder, things like that. And you have to be careful because I think, um, I think it's the elephants or something like that. Uh, some Dream Eaters go into, like, their super angry time. They have angry time, and they go red. And I believe uh, with the elephants, they regenerate their health to full. Because I remember, I've been fighting the same one, like, two, three times, and its health would always come back, and I was eventually not taking it down, and I don't know what was going on. Yeah, well, citation needed and all that, I guess. But uh, elephants didn't really give me that much trouble. I don't know their actual names. I'm not going to look it up. It would be too much effort. Um, the rhinos uh, were what annoyed me most, to be honest. I agree. The rhinos are definitely uh, kind of a problem. Other than that, uh, here I really came to realize uh, how much uh, the enemies like to focus on multi-hit juggling attacks that are fucking annoying, I swear to God. Especially, um, I don't know if they show up in this world, but um, I think... Uh, like those rabbit dream eaters show up and they do that. Or the cats. The cats like to juggle you with, like, a spiral attack. Sometimes in the middle of an enemy's combo, you can, like, hit the block button and, you know, stop them in their tracks. Um, with the cat dream eaters, you're in the air, so I can't think of many strategies to get you out of that. If you know any, please feel free to leave a comment. The only thing I can really recommend is just uh, bringing out, you know, the aerial recovery moves. Like, Sora and Riku have their own ones where they counterattack, but you don't get those until way later on. Now, I gotta say, visually, Paris is represented great here. You know, they got it down to, like, a fine art at this point in terms of visual design. But, again, it's the lack of people which just makes it feel dead. And you could say, well, it's a dream, you know, maybe everyone's just asleep, but... It feels a little bit soulless, which, considering the source material they're dealing with here, is a big disappointment in my eyes. Still, I do have to say, I mean, I have to agree with you on how it's uh, represented. I love how, since the environments are so huge, they could really give Notre Dame a sense of fastness and space. It's really impressive, and especially for the city outside. Even there isn't people around, which is a detriment. The fact that the city is just so huge and expansive, that's just really neat compared to, like, past games with how narrow the uh, levels were. Like, I was playing a bit of KH1 the other day, and oh, I love that game, but you'd be surprised, especially in levels like Deep Jungle, how uh, the worlds just feel like um, boxes connected to one another. They don't really feel all that organic, especially in uh, Wonderland. Yeah, definitely, I agree there. This game has definitely... Um, I think really has taken a step up in terms of uh, level design. And here's one of the uh, link attacks you can do with your Meow Wow. I think that's what it's called. Yep. Uh, each one has different ones. The Stompy one is pretty helpful because uh, if you dual link, you get like a giant version of your Meow Wow or whatever. I don't, I don't want to call it a Meow Wow. I really don't. Let's we'll just call it Bob. <laughs> Bob. Bob the douchebag is back in cat form now. But, um... You know, you get a larger one with a lot of invincibility time, and yes, that definitely helps against some bosses, so you may want to keep that in mind. Did you ever do the reality shift in this world? Ah, uh, I did it like a few times just to see how it worked. I saw no point otherwise. You just grind on magic rails you come up with, so what? Hey, you're using Jesus' powers here. You're using the power of faith itself to kill things. I'd rather use the power of love, because I'm very familiar with that movie. Now, actually, I believe the Archdeacon, who was in the movie, does not show up in this world. Apart from a reference to him uh, in Riku's side of things, I think, no, he doesn't. Uh, a few other characters from uh, Hunchback don't appear in this game either. The character that's most sorely missed, though, is uh, Clopan, the narrator and uh, self-proclaimed King of the Gypsies. I it wouldn't really have added much to the story for this game, I think, so it's alright if they're not present. He made the movie feel so alive, you know, in addition to uh, its fantastic soundtrack, great animation. So, you know, a notable absence, but yeah, I agree. Apparently, there is a bell in Notre Dame, which is friggin' huge, uh, perhaps bigger than, you know, Big Marie, and on the inside it's encrusted with, like, jewels and whatnot. 
Wow, really? And that is the storyline of Hunchback of Notre Dame 2. Oh, God. Okay. My big problem with this is that in the movie, it was heavily implied that the talking gargoyles were a figment of a Quasimodo's imagination to deal with the loneliness and things like that. They never really went out and said, oh, they're talking gargoyles. No, they're just, fuck it, talking gargoyles. Well, you say that, but towards the end of the movie, they do start to interact with, um, like, the guards that are besieging Notre Dame and whatnot. Mm. Even then, you know, I, I much prefer the more vague nature of them rather than just coming right out and saying it like that. You really couldn't have rendered some of Quasi's figures? Like, shit, even small NPCs don't get a chance in this world. <laughs> just make, like, a really tiny Esmeralda. So how come you and Quasimodo are so close? We've been friends for years. More than a decade of camaraderie. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You're not chasing Alexander. Go to hell. Oh, no, he is, actually. Well, I don't know uh, who reprises their roles among the Gargos. I know uh, that's not the original voice actor for uh, Laverne, because she passed away. I believe that was uh, Mary Vickers, if I recall correctly. Mary Wicks, actually, and... Uh... Just a little bit of trivia quickly. Uh, the tall gargoyle is called Victor, and the small one is called Hugo. Victor Hugo wrote the original Hunchback of Notre Dame. The more you know. Now, I don't mind these guys, but they're not the kind of gargoyles I would want to show up in Kingdom Hearts, though, if you catch my drift. <laughs> I'm giving you a hint. As a very uh, established internet celebrity, I would just like to say that um, if we remove the gargoyles... These gargoyles are put in better ones, it would be a lot better. Just consider that a subtle hint. I'll go talk to him. 